we can start to think about somewhat alien minds by looking at a situation where the system is navigating a space that is very hard for us to visualize, so this kind of anatomical morphous space, but it has the advantage that all of the mechanisms that it's using to do this are homologous to what our brains use to do the things that we do. So I think this is a nice stepping stone. It's a nice way before we start thinking about aliens and, you know, all kinds of weird uh, intelligences, we can start uh, kind of sharpening our tools here. Here's something that's using the exact same machinery to do this in a space that's hard for us, right? So that's, that's why I think it's a good model system. So I want to show you, I want to show you some xenobots. And the way that they're formed is that we take a frog embryo, some of these uh, prospective uh, epithelial cells up here, we put them in a dish. Now there's many things they could do. They could die they could form a two-dimensional um, cell culture layer. Instead, what they do is they coalesce into this little unit. And here, this is, this is kind of neat. Um, this is a close-up. Each one of these little circles is a single cell. So you see this little group of cells. It doesn't hurt that it looks like a little horse. I, I just think this is, uh, this is cute. Moves over and it sort of has some, some interactions with us. You see a little calcium flash here. I'll get to the calcium momentarily. So the individual cells do these kind of things. Then they, then they sort of coalesce into this. And then you get this little motile creature. It has cilia on its outer surface. It uses them to propel through the water. It can go in circles. It can patrol back and forth like this. Here it is traversing a maze. So this is still water. There's no, there's no flow. There are no gradients. It takes the corner without bumping into the wall. And then at this point, it spontaneously turns around to go back where it came from. These are not like the biobots people make out of uh, muscle cells where you have to pace them and you control where they go. This thing is completely autonomous. I'm not making any claims yet about their level of intelligence. We're testing all that. We have some interesting data on their memory formation and so on. I, I don't think you can tell any of that from just from observations of behavior. However, they have all sorts of interesting uh, behavioral capacities. For example, if you give them loose epithelial cells, what they do is they run around and they collect them into little, little balls. And because they themselves are working with an agential material, these little balls mature to be the next generation of xenobots. Guess what they do? They run around and they make the next generation, which makes the next. As far as we know, no other creature on Earth reproduces this way. We certainly didn't teach them to do that. This is, this is spontaneous. And we can do one other, one other interesting thing. We can ask uh, what their transcriptomes look like. What genes do they express? Well, it turns out that they express hundreds of new genes that their age-matched embryos do not express. Among these genes is a cluster of genes related to hearing. We decided to test this and Pi uh, put a speaker underneath these guys. And what we basically see is that they, they respond. You can tell from their, from their behavior that they actually react to these stimuli in ways that actually embryos do not do. So this is novel. These are novel gene expressions, novel behaviors, such as kinematic self-replication and responding to a sound stimuli that, that the original material does not do.